this is my Samsung 46 inch LCD TV uh, model 4665FX. The problem what we're having is uh, whenever you push the power button, the you hear it cycling, trying to cycle on, hear the relays clicking in it, but nothing happens and this will go on for hours and hours and hours. Initially the problem was it would go on maybe five, ten minutes and then the TV would turn on and there'd be pixels all over it, purple, blue, not moving, but there's picture and sound. <clears throat> but recently it, the problem got way worse and now it doesn't turn on at all. So today what we're going to do, we're going to show you how to disassemble and locate the problem and fix it. Uh, from what I understand and from reading on the internet, it's a fairly common problem within this production line uh, through, throughout various different sizes. Uh, and uh, what we wanted to do is just kind of show you what's going on first and now we'll proceed with the disassembly. Alright, first of all I want to go over some disclaimers before you start this project. Uh, as with pretty much anything, if you take it apart, you're going to avoid the warranty. If you still have a manufacturer's warranty, I highly suggest sending it back to the manufacturer. Uh, but if you're out of warranty and you want to fix it yourself instead of paying to get it done, this is the way to do it. Uh, you want to make sure this is unplugged before you start it. Uh, whenever electronics are plugged in, you try to take them apart, bad things happen. Uh, also, uh, when working with capacitors, which is what we're doing uh, in this particular job, uh, capacitors have a history of being a little dangerous if they're shorted out. Uh, they continue to hold a charge even after they're unplugged from a power supply. The smaller scale capacitors we're working with today aren't that big of an issue, uh, but you need to keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, also, uh, in the description for this video, I will list the tools re required, uh, and as, long as, or as well as any additional information that I forgot to, to add. So uh, anytime I upload a video, make sure you read the description. That's, that's a big key thing because uh, in my past videos, I've added things that I forgot to mention and people for some reason don't want to read the description before taking on a big job like this. But uh, check those and if there are any annotations on, be sure to leave those on as well because if there is important information that I forgot, a lot of times I'll go back and put those in as an annotation. Uh, I'm not the type of person to put a bunch of useless annotations telling you to subscribe to my videos and like and comment and this and that. So if there's anything in there that's important, so please be sure to check it out. Okay, we have a total of 24 screws that need to be removed from the back side. Uh, starting with uh, the corner here and working around, we have this one. There's one there. One there. 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 These two. There's one inside where the connectors are. And they're pretty much self-explanatory if you just look around the set. And then also the four mounting screws need to be removed. And what we will do, we'll go ahead and remove those. And we will jump ahead as soon as those are removed to try to save time. All right, now that we have all the screws removed from the rear panel, we'll go ahead and pull the panel off. Alright, now that we have the rear cover off, uh, keep in mind that when you're looking at this video, we're looking at it from the top side, so it may be upside down depending on how you're looking at the TV. Uh, this is where the problem exists. We need to remove this outer casing. Uh, it looks like there are four screws on this side and I believe four screws on that side. Three on that side? Okay. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and remove those screws to save time and we'll start the video back. All right, these screws are removed, and we'll remove this cover. And uh, I need to correct myself too, there were only a total of six screws there, not eight. And when you're doing this kind of stuff, it's always a good idea to take pictures as you're removing stuff, uh, lay stuff out in an orderly fashion so you know where stuff goes. And what we need to do next is unplug all these connectors. It looks like most of these will only go into one plug so there's not a very high likely likeliness that you'll get them plugged in the wrong place. Just kind of set those 
to the side. And it looks like there are six screws holding this in. And we will remove those and start the video again. All right, those screws are removed. Now we'll lift the board. And if you look closely, these three capacitors are what we're working with. You can see on the top side, uh, they're actually bulged. I don't know if you can see that or not, but where the other ones are kind of flat, these are bulged. That's, that's a sign of a back capacitor. And also on this one, you can actually see fluid coming out of the top side. And what we're going to want to do, we're going to use some solder wick and we're going to remove the solder on the back side and these should pop right out. And also with the capacitors, you want to make a note too, there's usually a positive and a negative side. And yeah, they are marked on the board. You can see there's a plus right there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is a plus. You need to make sure you get these in right. But uh, we'll go over that a little bit more when we go to put them back in. All right, one thing you might want to do, you might want to locate the capacitors that you're going to be removing. And from the back side, we're going to take a Sharpie and mark just a small mark so we know what we're removing. And the best way to do that is to actually look at the side Hold your finger on it, you can kind of get a good idea where they're at that way. Alright, now we know which ones we're removing. Alright, we're going to go ahead and attempt to remove the solder on these pins. Now sometimes when you go to desolder stuff like this, sometimes the solder doesn't melt right away. If you have trouble with that, just uh, put a dab of solder, extra solder on it, and sometimes that'll get it to break loose. And don't be stingy with your wire wick, or your desoldering wick, because uh, it'll usually get filled up pretty quick. Watch you don't burn your fingers, this stuff does get hot. And as you'll notice, these tabs are bent over a little bit. Makes it a little more difficult to remove them. You just try to bend them back the best you can. If you break them off, it's no big deal because these are coming out anyway. Now 
those are bent back up. We'll hit it again with the solder wick just to make sure we got it all. pop out There they are, successfully removed. And what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up this flux that that came out on the board before we put the new ones in. So I'm going to prep that real quick. Okay, we have the board cleaned up, and now we're getting ready to put the new capacitors in. Uh, as you can see, the new capacitors we have are physically a little larger than the ones that came out. That is fine though because the spacing between the pins is uh, equal length. They should still fit fine. Uh, you need to take note to the longer pin is your positive and the shorter pin is your negative. That's indicated right here on the side of the capacitor. You want to make sure you get those in right. Uh, on this board, if you're looking at it from the angle I am, the right side is the positive. What you want to do when you get that in place, kind of pull it kind of tight and bend those pins over just a little bit so it doesn't move. And we'll do the same for the other two. The far side is the positive on this. And we will put a dab of flux everywhere we're going to solder. Make sure your solder joints are nice and clean. And once we get it soldered, we're going to clip the ends.
and we are now ready to reassemble. All right, before we put it back together, I want to give you a real quick look at what the capacitors look like installed, the new ones. They're a little tighter fit right here, but they fit just fine. All right, we're going to go ahead and proceed to put this back together. Starting with the board. Make sure all of your wires are out of the way. And there were six screws there. Three on each side. Make sure you get all these plugged back in. This is where it might be handy to take notes when you're disassembling this so you'll know what goes where. Most of these will only plug into one location. Alright, everything looks like it's plugged in. Put the cover back on. Set the back cover on. Make sure all your wires are tucked in, nothing sticking out. And we'll put these screws in and get back to you in a minute. And here we are. The TV's reassembled, getting ready to plug it back in for the first time. And we'll cross our fingers. Voila! Success. And there you go. Another job complete. Please feel free to comment, subscribe. I plan on doing more videos like this. I just don't know when. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching.